In this video, I'm going to show you how to do work with flowcharts and mind mapping using this custom GPT called Diagram Show Me. I'll drop the link to it below. I'm going to show you how to use this and some nuanced ways that you can get after uh, working with this in different use cases. So the first prompt that it'll work for is we'll say, uh, give me a business process for routing travel requests. It goes to the department manager, travel management team, finance team, and then back to the travel requester. So this is mapping out like a business process. So you might be using this for some sort of documentation so that, that way you, you have it around and you can add it to your written documentation so that way people can actually look at this and they can also learn. And here's the output. So it shows that the travel requester does their thing, department manager, travel management team, and finance team all do these different steps and it shows just like I asked um, and it shows even this arrow at the very bottom where after <clears throat> that process and review request happens it goes all the way back to the travel requester right here so you can download that uh, and use it in your documentation or you can get a full screen diagram right there super easy for the next prompt we're gonna map out some debt so let's say that you have various debts and then we're just gonna kind of map where those things are at and we're gonna give some numerical values and we'll see if it makes different size bubbles for those this is just an idea that I had for kind of laying out the different uh, financial pillars if you're trying to plan on like paying off debt or you're trying to just work on a budget and you're trying to like align what you have going on this is just a cool visual to kind of go along with that so this one failed but no worries we're just gonna spin it again and it's regenerating. Cool, so this is a visual right here. It says, hey, this is your financial situation. And then it has all the amounts that we described and then it has all the different categories and it built them together. And so if you had multiple cars, you could probably get those all clumped together and you could have uh, just a variety of different things. It's just kind of a, a cool thing to do any sort of uh, financial planning or any sort of structured representation of like where piles of money sit. This is also really good for like hierarchical structures or any sort of like diagrams of any sort of like organization. So I said, make me a diagram of the government structure of Switzerland. So we're looking at looking for it to give us some sort of diagram that outlines the government structure and powers and who informs who and if they have like a parliament or like I have no idea. Right. So we're about to see. Okay, great. So we got a diagram for that. Pretty cool. It shows how the citizens interact with the federal assembly and council and, and how, kind of all the roles through here. But I wanted to add a nuance. I said, add to the diagram, if there are states or provinces and how local governments interact with this federal level government. So we're looking for all of the information that we got in this diagram, but expand it out to include a broader scope of the local politics or kind of how that system is supposed to work. Okay, cool. So this breaks it down. So their states are called cantons and then it breaks down all the cooperation, local administration, all these things, who the citizens elect and then how that all kind of works. So really interesting, really fast uh, and clear breakdown in these little these little lines in the middle that point um, and have these labels of like what that what that's doing. So the citizens elect the cantons and then citizens elect the federal assembly. And it shows how all these things kind of work together. Very cool. Okay, for the next prompt, I'm gonna say, make a process diagram for logistical shipments of automotive pieces from a manufacturing plant in Detroit to a car dealership in Florida. So we're looking to see how that theoretically would work and we're actually tapping into the overall knowledge of ChatGPT to just get a diagram of how logistics even work for car parts so we're hoping that it brings something to the table that's interesting about that to kind of explain this sort of idea to us but through a visual cool yeah so this breaks down everything we were looking for and it just says you know this part is maybe for maintenance on the car in florida and so the manufacturing uh, plant uh, works with the logistics provider to send the automotive parts and then the logistics provider delivers the parts and then the car dealership uh, confirms the receipt and that goes back to the manufacturing plant that that's how that whole thing would work so you can kind of outline hey here's what we're gonna do and then you could even put the names of all these various entities if this was sort of sort of business you were actually running in every step in the way and you could even put the numbers uh, the the dollar amounts of, of the transactions of like fees and all that type of stuff that could go in the uh, in the middle here. 
Okay, so for this one, I'm going to say I want it to make a mind map of all the pieces of a V8 engine. So I want all the core pieces of that type of engine, and I want them outlined, and I want the, it to describe how you know an alternator works with a starter, works with a piston, etc. Okay, very cool. So we got this visual right here. It's super colorful, looks really neat, and it kind of breaks down all the pieces. But what we don't have is kind of a description of what all of them do. And I think that that would be really useful. So I'm putting that prompt in here. So we're gonna go ahead and send that. And while that's generating, we can kind of see how like a camshaft is related to lifters or a crankshaft is related to main bearings. And so these things are kind of uh, piled together. Um, you know, like pistons and piston rings, and they're all part of the engine, and this is collectively uh, part of the the overall. Um, all the these are all the components that make up that entire engine right here. So all these different pieces are what you're going to need to know about. So I think that uh, in itself is pretty helpful. So let's see here. We're going to try to see if we can um, pop this open. Cool. So I think this is great. So this says you know the lifters activate the valves. The camshaft controls the valve operation. The oil pump circulates engine oil, and so on, right? And all of these have a description of what their function is and how they are related to each other. And you could ask this to be even more detailed, but this is extremely valuable and um, relevant to this type of education. Like if you're learning about like different systems and you know what is a carburetor, what does that do? Well it mixes air and fuel, right? And then you could go to another GPT and you can ask it to give you uh, even more details on top of something like this. So you could deep dive and learn more about a carburetor. Okay, so for this next one, we're going to ask it to make a diagram of that maps how an API and enterprise server hardware and a front-end web application all map to a database and describe all the core functions functions of each, right? And we're going to see that. This is a really good one. Technology is very, like, ethereal. It's very, like, hard to grasp, especially if you're just talking to people who are maybe, like, non-technical. You may, may be very helpful to give them a diagram like this to say, like, this is how these things interact, and, like, this is the piece that does that. Kind of like the engine is really very much a similar concept. Cool, yeah. So this is a diagram we got here. So it, it even overlaps how like different things interact with each other in multiple ways. So it says like, you know, hey, this displays data from the database and then the front end web application sends it requests the API. And because I know this stuff, I know this checks out. So overall you can fact check these things, but this is kind of representative of, like of what ChatGPT would give you in a text format, but it shows it in a visual, which I think is just miles more helpful. Okay, this next one I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say make a process diagram of the life cycle and maintenance required for a Toyota Tacoma from one to 150,000 miles. So I'm looking for this to actually tell me like at what miles, what types of maintenance are actually required. And I could have specified a year here, but I just wanted to say in general on a Toyota Tacoma, like what, uh, I just wanna see what it comes up with um, and just see what that kind of looks like. Okay, cool. So this breaks down all the way down the line what the various um, checks would be and, and things that would uh, need to be done. And it says, you know, hey, at 120, you're looking at a complete vehicle overhaul. And it, it just has everything in the steps. And it even has these two personas of a mechanic and then an owner. So very useful, very cool. So for this next example, we're going to make a diagram that shows various social media presence in the accounts uh, and the number of followers that a company has. So there's various accounts here, and it's just going to kind of outline like, hey, here's how we're doing. And this could be used for a presentation where you're going to, you know, give like a monthly roll up and you're going to say like, hey, here's, you know, our current social standing. And this is, you know, all of these things are things you could use for, you know, documentation, presentations um, or anything like that. Okay, cool. That visual is pretty much the same as one of the ones we saw with the money. It's just like your company and then it breaks down all of the various follower counts for the different um, channels. So for this one, I'm going to say make a visual that outlines how music producers interact with artists and sound engineers and labels and their audience. And I've, you know, just kind of want to understand how that, you know, the music business works. And I just want like a diagram to show me all of that. And here's what that one looks like. Uh super good you know it talks about late record labels promoting um the artists right they collaborate with the music producer and then they interact with the sound engineer and you know it shows all the pieces of that 
For this next one, we're going to say basically that we have 10 people and we're trying to make a software engineering team and I wanted to define all the roles that would go well on this team and kind of break down how all of those will work together and what roles we'd have and what numbers of, of what roles we would have. So the only thing I'll say is that this one right here, sometimes they come out too wide. And so generally that's not very good for a diagram. So sometimes I ask it again for it to kind of make it more of a rectangular or a vertical shape. And I try to describe it um, and it kind of comes with mixed results. So I'll kind of show you what happens with that. So I'm going to say uh, make this um, more vertical and less wide of a diagram. So we'll see if it can do that, and generally that um, does turn out in some way to be effective, but sometimes it just ignores you and it just keeps on doing it uh, wide. It doesn't necessarily know how to crunch everything down into a smaller box, um, maybe even stack things. So the way this turned out, a little bit less vertical, but ultimately not as much as I would like, but you can kind of see that it has a hierarchy of a project manager and a scrum master, and they're kind of over these devs and these QA people and the UI UX designer and all this stuff. So pretty cool, but um, overall, wish it could be a little bit better, but it does outline a team structure. So it does do what uh, was intended. Oh, so this one's just for fun. So I'm going to have it do a mind map of how all the main Star Wars characters are related and linked and like uh, any of the important ones. I'm just going to kind of see what it shows me. And I just want to see like, okay, like R2-D2 is the droid of, you know, this person and like this person's a Padawan of this person. I just kind of want to see if that, how that comes out. Cool. So here's a diagram. Once again, a uh, colorful one, kind of like the engines. And right here, it just has Star Wars characters in blue. And then it breaks down all of the um, related, uh, you know, all the related characters kind of has them in, in pockets, right? You know, you got Han Solo and Kylo Ren and you got Luke Skywalker and, and Leia. They're all kind of over here. And then you've got, you got the clusters kind of. So sort of uh, making like a sort of a link node visual uh, of all those characters. So for this last one, I'm going to say, make me a mind map of the various Native American tribes and the main areas of North America that they lived in. So I think this one came out really good. So it has a bunch of different colors and it broke them all down into these regions like Southwest, Southeast, Northwest Coast, Great Plains. And then it has all of the different tribes by name. And it would be really cool if this was also on a map. But, you know, we can't have everything all at once. I'm sure that'll be a custom GPT that somebody will make eventually. But overall, very cool and super into it. I hope this video was super helpful for you to help learn how to use mind mapping for this GPT and how to make these diagrams. If you have any thoughts on any sort of useful videos that you want to see from my channel, drop a suggestion in the description. Uh, please drop a like and subscribe if you want more AI related content. Thank you so much for watching and have a great one.